Hello everyone! So what we're going to see in this video is a second analytical method for solving first-order differential equations. So we've already seen how we can solve separable differential equations using a separation of variables. So in this video we're going to study a second class of first-order differential equations, which I call linear differential equations, and we'll develop a general method for finding the solution to such differential equations. All right, so let me first define what a linear differential equation is. So the first order differential equation is linear if it can be put in the form dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to q of x, where p of x and q of x are two arbitrary functions that are continuous over some interval. But the key here is not the dependence on x, but the dependence on y. So y appears only in two terms, the first term, which is just dy dx, and the second term, which is a function of x times y, so the second term is linear in y, which is why, why the equation is called a linear differential equation. Now, it may happen that the equation you're given does not look like this at first, but if you can transform it uh, into this form by either dividing or multiplying by some functions of x or y, then it is linear. All right, so here's two examples. So if I first look at the equation dy dx plus e to dx times y is equal to 1 over x, then this equation is linear because it is exactly of the form above. The dependence on x is not important, but the de dependence on y is. The first term is dy dx, and the second term is linear in y, so it is a linear differential equation. If, on the other hand, I look at the equation dy dx is equal to x minus y squared, say, then this is not linear, because I cannot transform it into the form above, because there's a term here which is quadratic in y, so it's not a linear differential equation. All right, so how can we solve linear differential equations? It turns out that in general, linear differential equations won't be separable, so you can't just use separation of variables. So what can we do? Well, let me work through an example. So consider the equation dy dx plus 1 over x times y is equal to x. So first, this equation is linear because y only appears in the first two terms, and the first term is dy dx, and the second term is linear in y. However, the equation is not separable because you can't bring all the y's on one side and the x's on the other side. So what can you do? Well, let me do a little trick. So I'm going to multiply both, side, both sides of the equation by x. Why do I want to do that? Good question. We'll see. All right, so let, let me just do it. So if I multiply by x, on the left-hand side I get x times dy dx plus x times 1 over x, which is just 1, so I get y. And on the right-hand side I get x squared. All right, that doesn't seem very helpful until you realize that the left-hand side is actually a very nice expression. Right, The left-hand side is exactly equal to the derivative d dx of the product x times y. Right, If you apply the product rule, d dx of x times y will be x times dy dx plus y times dx dx, which is just, just 1. So this is exactly equal to the left-hand side. So in other words, my equation is d dx of x times y, which is equal to x squared. But now this is very nice, because I can integrate on both sides with respect to x, right? So if I integrate the left-hand side with respect to x, and the right-hand side with respect to x, I can certainly do it. The integral on the left-hand side is the integral of a derivative, so the antiderivative of a, of a der derivative is the function itself, so that will give me x, y on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side I'm integrating x squared, so I'll get x cubed over 3 plus the constant of integration. And finally I can solve for y, so if I divide the whole expression by x, I'll get that the function y is equal to x squared over 3 plus c over x, which is the general solution of the original differential equation. Now this is very cool, but it raises two questions. First, how did I know that I had to multiply by x to start with? And second, can we do that for an arbitrary linear differential equation? Well, let's study the general case. So we have an equation given by dy dx plus p of x times y equals to q of x for some functions p of x and q of x. How can we find the general solution? Well, the idea is to do a trick similar to what we did in the previous example. So what we want to do is find a function that I will call i of x, and it is a very important function, it has a name, it's called the integrating factor. So we want to find a function i of x such that 
if we multiply the equation by i of x, then the left-hand side has a very nice form, which is similar to what we had in the previous example. So the left-hand side becomes the derivative of i of x times y. If we can find such an integrating factor, then we can solve the equation. Because if we multiply the equation by i of x, now by definition we know that the left-hand side is d dx of i of x times y. And on the right-hand side, we have i of x times q of x, because we've multiplied the equation by i of x. And now we can just integrate both sides with respect to x. On the left-hand side, we can evaluate the integral directly, because that's an integral of a derivative. So we'll get i of x times y. On the right-hand side, we cannot evaluate the integral, because it depends on the particular functions, i of x and q of x. But given such functions, we could evaluate it. And then we can solve for y by dividing by i of x. And that will give us the general solution for the original differential equation. So the question is, can we find such an integrating factor in general? Well, the answer is yes. We can always find such an integrating factor. So let's see how it goes. So we want the left-hand side to become d dx of i times y. And this should be equal to the left-hand side of the original equation times the integrating factor i. So this should be equal to i times dy dx plus i times the function p of x times y. And then we can expand the left-hand side by using the product rule. So we'll get two terms. First one is going to be i times dy dx plus di dx times y. And the first line should be equal to the second line. So I can subtract on both sides the term i times dy dx, and I can also divide by y, and I will end up with the equation di dx is equal to i times the function p of x. But now what you realize is, this, that, is that this is in fact a separable equation for i as a function of x. Right? I can bring all the i's on one side and all the x's on the other side. More specifically, what I'll do is divide by i and multiply by dx. So the left-hand side becomes 1 over i times di, and the right-hand side becomes p of x times dx. So all the i's are on the left-hand side and all the x's on the right-hand side. So the equation is separated. So I can integrate it, I integrate on both sides. On the left-hand side, the integral just gives me the natural log of uh, the absolute value of i. And on the right-hand side, I cannot evaluate the integral explicitly because I don't know what p of x is. But if I was uh, given an explicit equation, so I would be given a function p of x, then I could integrate it. And then there is, of course, an arbitrary constant of integration. Finally, I can solve for i. So I take the exponential on both sides, get rid of the absolute value as before by changing the sign of the arbitrary constant. And I end up with the statement that the function i should be given by a constant times the exponential of the integral of p of x dx. But in fact, here I'm only interested in finding one particular integrating factor that works. I'm not trying to find the most general integrating factor. So I can fix the constant. So I can pick my favorite constant. So we usually choose a to be equal to 1. And that gives me a formula for the integration integrating factor, which is that it is equal to the exponential of the integral of p of x dx. All right, so the statement here is that this particular integrating factor will always work. Uh, what that means is that if I multiply the original equation by this particular i of x, then the left-hand side will always be equal to d dx of i times y, and then I will be able to use the reasoning here on my left column to, to find the general solution of the linear differential equation. All right, so let me end this video by summarizing how we can find a general solution to a linear first-order differential equation. So we're given an equation of the form dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to q of x. So the first step is to calculate the integrating factor. And we've just seen that this is given by the function i of x, which is equal to the exponential of the integral of p of x with respect to x. And if you're given a particular differential equation, then you have an explicit expression for the function p of x. So you can certainly evaluate the integral, take the exponential, to calculate the integrating factor. Then the second step is to multiply both sides of the equation by the integrating factor i of x. 
And then we know, as we've proved in the previous slide, that the left-hand side becomes d dx of i times y, while the right-hand side becomes i times q. And the third step is to integrate both sides with respect to x, which you can certainly do now, and then divide by i to get the solution y of x, which is equal to 1 over i times the integral of i times q times dx. And again, if you're given a particle equation, you have an explicit form for q of x, and you've calculated the integrating factor i of x, so you can certainly evaluate the integral on the right-hand side to get the general solution for the first-order differential equation. Now, it's important not to forget the integration constant and the indefinite integral uh, on the right-hand side here. So we could uh, fix the integration constant when we calculated the integrating factor because we were only trying to find one particular integrating factor. But here we're trying to find a general solution, so we must keep the integration constant. So in other words, I could have written instead something like that here to uh, emphasize uh, that we need to keep the integration constant when we evaluate the indefinite integral here.